In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We just heard the Gospel from St. Matthew, chapter 18, verses 1 to 9. And just to recall what the Lord said to his disciples. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And then Jesus called a little child to him, set him in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So today, by God's grace, I wish to contemplate with you for a few moments about the life of meekness and humility, how to live a true life of meekness every day of our lives. The Lord Jesus Christ in this gospel reading wanted to teach the disciples a crucial life lesson to live by every day of their lives. Human nature is prone to thinking about greatness and about honor and high places. And this has been our downfall from the beginning of creation. Pride is what brought down Satan in the book of Isaiah in the Old Testament. It reminds us of this, saying, How you have fallen from heaven, you star of the morning, sun of the dawn. You have been cut down to the earth, you who defeated the nations. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God, and I will sit on the mount of assembly in the recesses of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. And of course, because of this pride that entered into Satan, his fall was great from being an archangel to falling to this low level. Pride is what Satan used to bring down the fall of man by saying to Eve, and you will be like gods, knowing good and evil, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. So here, in this morning's gospel, Christ uses the example of a child to teach the disciples about meekness and about humility. For in the life of a child, we find many things, many good features and characteristics. We find innocence. We find obedience and the life of simplicity. And listen to what St. Hilary of Poitiers says, who sometimes they call the Athanasius of the West, says about this. He says, the Lord teaches that we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven unless we revert to the nature of children. That is, we must recall into the simplicity of children the vices of the body and mind. For children follow their father, love their mother, do not know how to wish ill on their neighbor show no concern for wealth, are not proud, do not hate, do not lie, believe what has been said, and hold what they hear as truth. And when we assume this habit and will in all the emotions, we are showing the passageway to the heavens. We must therefore return to the simplicity of children, because with it we shall embrace the beauty of the Lord's humility. Very powerful and beautiful words from St. Hilary. So you see, this is what humility is all about. 
the simplicity of children, because with it we shall embrace the beauty of the Lord's humility. How true these words are of St. Hilary, and we can really reflect deeply on them. We look at our lives and how complicated we make them sometimes. Not willing to forgive a spouse who says a wrong word, perhaps, or a brother or a sister who has done wrong by us or made a mistake against us. Not only do we get upset with them, but we may go for weeks or months or sometimes even years without talking to them. And I have seen so many examples of such things in my ministry. A father, for example, who cuts off his daughter because she married someone that he did not approve of. Didn't even see his grandchildren for years and years. Amazing how we as humans can deal with such pride and not learn humility in such cases to forgive and to move on. Why do we do this to each other, I wonder? Sometimes it is over the most trivial things. I remember many years ago, two very wealthy relatives fighting over some property that was really not worth that much in Egyptian pounds when you convert it to Australian dollars, it did not make that much. And they were both so well off that they really did not need to bicker and fight about this property. But they did, and they came to ask me for advice and to try to resolve the conflict between them. And the arguments got so nasty with many words of hatred and anger right in front of them. Why? Over some money that both of them didn't even need. They were willing to cut off all communications between the two families. One of them told his children, see this relative that was sitting right there in the, in the room? They are now dead. This was how the anger and the pride had reached inside them. I was shocked to hear such words. Right in front of that relative, it was shocking. Where is the simplicity of children here? Where is the humility and the love? We can find it by observing closely little children at play. Take time to observe little children in their purity of heart and learn a lesson for your life. And I'm sure each of you have heard similar stories. St. Anthony the Great, the father of monasticism, was once asked, how can one overcome Satan? And he answered, through humility. St. Anthony's life is a very good example for us of humility. If you have not read his life, Please find it on the internet or in a book about his life written by St. Athanasius. And you can see many places in his life story where we can learn from his humble life. He teaches us many lessons about humility. For example, the meeting with the woman who, woman who was bathing at the edge of the town. And he says to her, are you not ashamed to be bathing where a monk is living? And she said to him, if you are truly a monk, you would go into the inner wilderness and live there. And instead of rebuking her, he took a lesson for his life and left and began to enter into the inner wilderness and began this beautiful spiritual monastic life that he taught to the whole world. And also how he dealt with the attacks of the devil that came and were seeing him, how he had begun this path and wanted to put obstacles along the way and try to puff him up that he was a great saint and the attacks of the devil constantly against him. 
but he humbled himself, and the devil could not bear it and fled away from him. So what is humility then? Is it merely words that one may speak? Or is it actions that one performs? Or is it something more deeper than that? A person may say many words of humility when someone praises them. And they may say, oh, I'm a poor person and unworthy of all of these words. And yet inside of them, they're being full, full of pride and being puffed up and wanting to hear more and more praise. Such people are deceiving themselves and deceiving others. A certain situation will arise and their true selves will be revealed and their fall will be great. So we need to all be aware of this. True humility is for people to know the truth about themselves, each one of us to know the truth about ourselves, to realize that none of us are perfect and that we are prone to error and that we are sinners and that we know and we realize this every single day and lead the life of true repentance. And to feel unworthy and to know our limitations that we cannot do everything and need the support and help of others. And that when we, are, we compare ourselves to God's holiness and righteousness, that we know that we are nothing, that we are mere dust. But having the Holy Spirit inside of us on the day that we were baptized, then we received power from on high and can say with St. Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We see a good example of this in the tax collector mentioned in the Gospel of St. Luke in chapter 18 and verses 9 to 14. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He felt his sinfulness and felt his unworthiness and really meant it deep inside and understood what it means to humble himself in front of the Lord. In the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15, the son, when he awakes, realizes his unworthiness because of his sin. And he said, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And really came back knowing his error and kneeling before his father, asking for forgiveness. And the wise King Solomon in the Old Testament, for example, knew his limitations, and he said to God, Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David. But I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. Oh, Solomon, you are now a king. Everyone is praising you and kneeling in front of you and calling you your highness and giving you all of these accolades. But this was the response of King Solomon, who knew truly who he was and that he compared himself with a little child not knowing how to come in or go out. So this is another example of true humility. Also, when one compares themselves with God's holiness, we see how unclean that we may be. If you bring a, a black cloth and pour black ink on it, you will not be able to see the black ink because it's exactly the same. If you are full of sin and you are living a sinful life, and not comparing your life with Christ, then 
Satan will keep on making you to continue to fall. But if you pour some black ink on a white cloth, straight away you will see the spots of the black ink when we compare our lives with the holiness and righteousness of God, then we will want to aim for that holy life and that righteous life as the Lord asks of us to be perfect and to be holy as our Heavenly Father is perfect and holy. This is how Isaiah felt at his commission. He saw a vision and heard the seraphim saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Then Isaiah said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. So when he compared his life, his words, with the holiness of the Lord of hosts, he knew that he was nothing and needed to really live a righteous and holy life before the Lord. So what are the factors that produce humility? What are the factors that produce humility within us? Affliction may produce humility in human beings. We see an example of this in the people of Israel in the wilderness. God says to them in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you. They had gone far away from God and made the golden calf and started to worship the golden calf. And God wanted to teach them a lesson to humble them and test them for 40 years in the wilderness. But this type of humility comes from internal factors. And it is not the spiritual humility that we are looking for. The best example of humility we find in Christ himself. Christ says in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So let us look to the Lord. Look at all of his life and all that he went through while he was living on this earth and the, and the difficult situations under the, his own creation that he suffered for the sake of us and showed us true humility. From his birth, we learn humility. Being born in that simple major, that filthy major where animals were living, and he was be willing to accept this, not finding anywhere to lay his pure head and to be born in that manger in order to fulfill the message of salvation for the whole world. So we learn so much from his birth about humility. In fleeing from Herod, he could have destroyed him in an instant, but accepted with great humility to flee to Egypt. And it was a great blessing for all of us as Copts. In accepting rebuke, in being tried, in being lashed, in being crucified, all throughout his life, no greater meekness and humility have we seen than this. This is the type of humility that each of one of us needs. The world needs to learn it. It is a tough world out there. And each person is trying to jump over the shoulders of the other in front of them. And vain glory is evident all around us, especially in the media. You just need to turn on the television and you'll see it all over the place. People watch television, read newspapers and magazines, and it is all full of vain glory, pride, and other such images. If a person goes down that road of pride, they are truly heading for destruction. And this is what the wise Solomon tells us. Pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before a fall, as mentioned in Proverbs 16, 18. 
And this is what happens also to a hot air balloon. If you have seen a hot air balloon, it rises up when they put, they turn the fire on and it forms hot air inside of the balloon and it rises. But once that hot air is switched off, what happens? It can go down very quickly. So it is better to know our reality and to stay low near the ground so that we do not fall, or at least that our fall will not be great. But if you are sitting high up, your fall could be fatal. The true humble person does not feel that they are humble, for they feel that they still have a long journey ahead of them. And are there rewards for living a life of humility? Definitely there is. So what are some of these rewards? It leads to honor. God sees the lowly and lifts them up and honors them. And look at the example of our Holy Mother, St. Mary the Theotokos, who was given that blessing and honor of carrying Christ in her womb and giving birth to our God and Savior. This is what happened also with King Solomon. It also brings blessings. As God said to Solomon, if any people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Mentioned in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. So then God hears the humble and responds to their needs, forgives them and blesses them abundantly. Humility guarantees exaltation. And this is what St. James says about this. He says, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. We do not need praise from men and women. We need our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one who sees that we are truly trying to live according to his commandments and not living a life of pride, and he is the one who will lift us up. So our honor should come from God and not from people. It is God who gives us our honor and our dignity. Our honor and dignity do not come through human beings. Humility also ensures God's presence. God does not dwell in the proud and the lofty and the high people. He is a God of meekness. In the book of Isaiah, it says, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Humility makes one truly great. As the Lord tells his disciples in Matthew 18, uh, chapter 18, verse 4, Therefore, whoever humbles himself at this little child is the greatest in heaven. Humility also gives more grace, and St. James speaks about this. He says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. As Christians, we are called to put on meekness and humility by St. Paul. In his epistle to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering. Wear these things. Make them a permanent part of the way that you live every day. Put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. Also, we must be aware that we do not let humility to lead us to despair and loss of hope, because that is not the goal of humility at all, because this is the work of Satan to try to put us in despair. But we should realize our shortcomings and our sins and try to overcome them through God's grace. And finally, let us see what the fathers of the church teach us about the subject of humility. Just two quotes. 
A brother asked an old man saying, what is humility? And he replied, it is when your brother sins against you and you forgive him before he comes to ask for forgiveness. I wonder if we can reach this lofty level. Someone does something wrong by us and inside we are full of anger and hate sometimes and we don't want to speak to the person but here the church fathers teach us how to forgive even when the person comes to ask for forgiveness and to try sometimes to make excuses for people when they do something wrong by us. Maybe they had a bad day at work. Maybe there's an issue in their life that is going on that you're not aware of and they took it out on you, unfortunately. How to forgive even before people come to ask for forgiveness. And the last quote. The devil appeared to a brother disguised as an angel of light and said to him, I am Gabriel and I have been sent to you. The brother said to him, See if it is not for someone else to whom you have been sent. As for me, I am not worthy for it. And immediately the devil vanished. He left, truly didn't feel that he was worthy of such an honor that an angel would appear to him and knew his shortcomings and his, his sins and was trying to live a life of repentance. So I hope that we can learn a good lesson this morning's gospel from the, our Lord and how he gave a great lesson to his disciples by bringing in that young child, living a simple life, a life of love and hope, and that we may learn the same to live this life of humility all throughout our lives. And glory be to God forever. Amen.